Hello chaps and chuppets and welcome to another board games that everybody should dot 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 a video series where I take a game, I show you how it plays and then I give you two reviews, a technical cold review of what you're getting in a box and then my personal feelings of how all this meshes together. Spring is here and the sound of birds is everywhere and it's a lovely sound and that's why I'm going to be looking at this game called something or other uh, but for the sake of this video I'm going to call it songbirds well actually it's it's actually marked on the side there songbirds yes this is proof that the micro game is not dead there are still these little games coming up and this is a recent Kickstarter that was available for people to purchase and it's a small game of cards where players are trying to make their type of bird sing the loudest in the forest but the thing is you won't know what type of bird you are until the very end of the game when you actually have to choose between those last few cards so um, without further ado let me take you to the table and show you how to set it up and play In the box you'll find a small deck of cards. In amongst these cards you'll find the Owl and the Raven card. You can place these in the box unless you're playing a four player game or wish to play with the Owl expansion. There are also two scoring cards. Place these on the table somewhere near the middle. The remaining deck is the playing cards. This deck of cards is made up of four different coloured birds and each has a value between one and seven. Give these a shuffle and deal these to the players. In a two player game, deal 13 cards to each player. In a three player game, deal nine cards to each player. And in a four player game, deal seven cards. Any cards left over, just place to the side. There should be some negative point and positive point tokens. Take the positive tokens and place them face down, shuffle them all up, and then place them out in a five by five grid, horizontally and vertically. In the middle of the grid, you'll place out one of the remaining cards from the deck. Or if you're playing with four players, you'll need to place the Raven card face up, either on its A side or its B side. But we'll talk more about the Raven later on. You choose a start player, and now you're ready to play. So how does the game play? Well, imagine that this is the TV show The Voice, where the players are the judges, and the birds are the four contestants. And what players are going to be doing as judges is they're going to want to back a winner. That winner is the bird that has the best voice in the forest, the one with the most points at the end of the game. To get those points, what will happen is once the forest is filled up, you'll count the columns vertically and horizontally. You'll count up the values of the cards of the same color bird and the bird with the loudest voice will win the points at the end of the column. If there is a tie for the highest, they cancel each other out, which means that the second highest singing voice of a bird will win the points at the end of the road. If they all cancel each other out, nobody wins those points. So how does the game play? Well, basically, players are going to play one card from their hand into the forest next to an adjacent existing card in the forest. And then play will go around the table. So you're either going to be playing a card which is going to help you get that volume of the bird that you want to win higher in the column to get the points at the end, or you're going to be playing a card which will hinder several birds. Because as I said, if you get egality in a line, 
those birds cancel each other out and hopefully the, the second loudest bird in that column is yours and you'll win the points. As I said earlier, you're gonna be left with that one card. Now that card is your betting slip. That is the bird that you are voting for to win the voice. So final scoring, here's a demonstration of how it works. Let's have a look at this first row here. We add up the values. Okay, so blue has a total of seven with the six and the one. Green has a total of nine with the six and the three and gray has a total of two, which means that this seven point token goes to green for having the highest value. You take the token, you add it to the pile of tokens which belong on the green bird. And then let's go to the second row. And we have um, red has a total of seven with the three and the four. You have the blue, which has seven. And then you have the one and the one and the green. So what happens here? Sevens are the highest value. The sevens cancel each other out, which means that it'd be the next value, which unfortunately would be one. And they cancel each other out, which means nobody wins this six points. Now, these birds don't just score this way, they score this way as well. So you have to place your birds in the right position to try and win both directions. So if we count this way, we have six blue plus four blue, which is 10. You also have uh, three gray and uh, seven gray, which equals 10. So those two cancel each other out, which means that this number one green bird, although it didn't win this way it actually won this 10 point token and as i said it goes on there so as the game goes on you do all of those rows and these tokens get placed on all of these birds and that is the final score basically so the red bird has probably won with the highest score there the gray bird is lost and uh, somewhere in the middle, the green and the blue bird have not done too bad. Everyone will then reveal which color card they got. So one player was a green, one color player was the blue and one player was the red. So obviously the red player has won because they bet the red and the red has the most points. If two or more players had voted for red, say two players had voted, Obviously, the value of your card gets added to the points as well. So you would, this player would have won by two points extra than this one. Now, if you played a four player game, you would have started with the Raven in the middle or the Crow, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's not Brandon Lee, by the way. Um, and that has some negative point effects. And that's why there are negative point tokens. So basically, what will happen after you've done the scoring is you will assign negative points. So in this case, on the, the right hand side of the crow, you'll get negative four points for the bird that is the most, well, the highest number. So in this case, it'll be the gray seven, which will receive the negative four on top of their score. And again, it'll be the same underneath. So here we have negative five. But as you can see, both of these birds have a seven, which means neither of them get a negative five point. And here it would be the blue, which would get the negative three. And here it would definitely be blue, which would get the negative two. So that's one side. The other side is pretty similar. You get negative four points. But as you can see, it is in correspondence to these four chords, four chords, four cards. Even so in this case, there's a seven gray, but there's 11 in blue, which means the blue would get the negative four, etc. for the same for this little arc here. A solo game plays basically the same. The setup will be a different, it'd be like this. You'll place out this many cards, so that's nine cards. You'll also draw two cards into your hand. You'll play one, again, adjacent an existing card, and you'll keep the other, and then you'll draw back up to your hand size of two. Or you can, Put one card to the side and say that is the horse that i'm betting on that's going to be my winning color at the end of the game and you keep playing until the grid fills up and then you do the scores as normal and then you reveal your own card which you should remember by now you'll total up the scores and then your score so in this case gray whatever i score for gray i will minus off everything that i scored for the other three birds and that would be my total score and i'll compare that with a score chart in the rule book and that will tell me how well i did
So let's start with the technical side of the review. What are you getting for your money? Well, you're getting a small box, you're getting a small deck of cards, you're getting a handful of very sturdy, thick tokens, and a rule book. Let's start with the rule book. The rule book is easy to read as it is to fold up and fold out. It's very well laid out. Uh, very simple to understand. Everything is there from the one player solo version to the two and three player version to the four player version. Very, very nice. And as I said, well written and easy to understand. The cards are very simple. The art is cute and adorable. Reminds me very much of, you know, the images my dad used to draw and paint when in his younger days. Um, they don't serve no purpose. It is basically the numbers which are the important thing as well as the color. The owl expansion that comes with it is just a simple little add-on thing where you basically, if you have the owl, you can play the owl to remove a bird from the forest to put that bird into your hand. And if you have the owl at the end of the game, you actually lose the game entirely with zero scores. And as I said, these tokens, nice size, nice thickness, very sturdy. Um, unfortunately, you may have trouble differentiating the sixes from the nines, but after a while you will figure out that it's always the, the berries which are gonna be upright and on the left-hand side of the token. So that is actually a nine, not a six. But apart from that little confusion, there you go. The mechanisms themselves. The mechanisms are very simple. You're playing a card down into a forest or into a tableau or into a, a grid, whatever you want to call it. And at the end of the game, you're scoring points for the, the position of the, the color that you have backed with that one card in your hand. Sounds simple, actually very difficult to teach. But once you've played it a couple times, the mechanisms work really well and really strong. It's a mathematical puzzle. And so uh, technically, components not being well and look at me, because it is just a super small game. Um, no minis, no, no 52 page graphic novel that comes with the rule book. Uh, I can only give the game an eight out of 10, which is good still um, due to the fact that it's the mechanisms which actually make this game live. It's not the art, it's not the card components, it, it's none of that. It's the fact that it is a good mechanism and that is it, technical review. So how do I personally feel? Where's this emotion? Do these songbirds really sing to me? Am I going to win the voice? So Songbirds, in summary, is a board game that every card game enthusiast will enjoy for five minutes. Let's expand on that, five minutes. The game plays pretty quickly. It's a case of just whack a card down and then whack another card down. And then when you're left with that last card, see if you're lucky enough to have won. Unless you're playing with people that try to outthink the game. Now the game always stumbles at the beginning where players don't know which card they're going to play. And then once the engine starts building up, then people start doing the math and adding up things and go, okay, I've got this card, this card, this card, which means that those cards haven't been played. So they've probably still got those cards. And this card goes here. So a game could take longer with people that are just like over and analyze and do the math. But if you're playing haphazardly and willy nilly like I do, the game is over in five minutes. Strategy, you might have a strategy with this game. You might say, well, okay, well, I've got four red cards. That's more than all the other cards. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for red to win. Or you might say, well, I haven't got, I've got one card of green. I'm gonna save that one because I think that one's gonna win because then everyone else will play their green cards. It is kind of a, a big mathematical prop puzzle which you just gotta, go along with. Now teaching the game, I've had players have this cerebral uh, stepping block which they can't get their foot on. You know, it's simple. You play a card, you play a card, you play a card, and then you do the calculations to see who won the points. Simple, but that stepping block, they struggle. And then once they do figure it out after they've seen a game played, they go into their next cerebral stepping block problem. What is the first card I'm gonna play? Yes, this game has, it's a game. But people uh, struggle to find a strategy or a, a reason to play certain cards. And they hesitate and they take their time and they're like, they don't know what to do. They're just kind of like blank. 
But there are those players that just go, okay, yeah, willy-nilly, let's do this. And they have fun. And I have fun, especially when I play willy-nilly. There is a little bit of thinking going on behind why I'm playing this card. As I said, maybe I've got five green cards, so I'm going to bet on green and keep one of them at back. Or I might just play out cards equally until I see that there is one card or one bird that's going to win lots of points. The game is light fun. It's quick. It's fast. It's, it's just fun. It feels like a traditional card game. And that's why I think it's going to appeal to that kind of audience. The yeah, art is cute, as I've said. It's a card game. It's, there's not much I can, else I can say to this game. Let's go to the solo mode. The solo mode is nasty. I don't like it. I don't like it. It works. It functions. It's it's interesting to try a few times, but after a while you just go, well, this is all totally random because you never know what card you're going to draw and what number is going to be left over because there's going to be like one card that you don't get to play. Yeah, there'll be that one card that you have, which is your bet that you're going to put to the side and then all the other cards will go into the tableau, but you'll have one card which won't get played. And every time I've played, not all every time, but most times that I've played, I go, right, I'm going to bet on green. Okay, the last card that doesn't get played is a green. And it could have won me lots of points if it had been in the tableau somewhere. The solo mode is just one giant mathematical conundrum. There is no strategy. It's just randomness. But playing with other players is fun. It's quick. It's light. It's fun. I enjoyed it. So my BGG score would be a 6 out of 10. It sounds bad, doesn't it? But if you look on BGG, it says that it's good enough that I'm usually in the mood to play. So if you combined my BGG score with my technical score, you're gonna get a seven out of 10. So there you go. That is Songbirds. Oh, I forgot to say, it's portable. So you can take it on holiday, which is a good thing as well. Yeah, I took it on holiday and didn't play it because cerebral people weren't staying with me on holiday. So there you go. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that it's pointed you in the direction whether Songbirds is a board game for you or a card game for you. And if you've liked this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might be interested in this game, share this video with them. And if you want to help out and check out all the things that I've been doing, you can go to my board game site, boardgameseverybodyshould.com. And you can also throw a few pennies my way as a kind of like donation to help with all this this stuff uh, at my Patreon, Board Games Everybody Should, and maybe get yourself some promos or maybe win one of my fabulous prizes that I give away monthly. So all that remains for me to do is say ciao for now, thanks for watching, and remember, please brush your teeth. That's got nothing to do with board gaming. Just sitting at the table next to Felice.